for our first performance, we have Victor Waring for a spoken word poem called No Justice, No Peace. How are people doing out here? It is hot. And it has nothing to do with the weather. These are hot times. So before I say this piece of poetry, I want to bring just a little bit of nuance to this particular day, to, the, to this particular Juneteenth, and let you all know that on January 1st, 1863, the Emancipa Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation was first put forth to the American people by the Union, freeing the slaves. On May 9th, 1865, the Civil War ended. And on June 19th, 1865, the Union Army, led by a general, a Union general, went to the state of Texas to say to the state of Texas, you need to free your slaves. And it took that for freedom to happen. And I, I say this because it's nuanced, because that is a really powerful metaphor for how justice works in America. Heels are dragged. Resistance happens. And until force comes in to say, you have to do this, oftentimes there's not a will or a desire to do it. Tell the people of Texas, months after the war has ended, you're free. So I just wanted to add that nuance to this day. America's foot dragging when it comes to justice. Because it's still happening. of a nation, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, our lungs are here, you can't stop us from breathing. Something is coming, something is laboring, something is crowning, something is entering. Perhaps this is the birth of a nation. You know these words, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. It is simple, really, but deeper than it seems, no justice, no peace. It isn't really a threat of violence, though it may be. It isn't necessarily a promise of action, though probably. It, it's mostly a statement of reality. There can be no peace when there is no justice, no justice, no peace. We do not live in a peaceful nation. 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 Before this latest round of killings, we were not at peace. Before this latest president, we were not at peace. When Breonna Taylor slept and died in her bed, there was no peace. When Philando Castile reached for his registration, that was not peace. When Amadou Diallo matched the general description, he felt no peace. When the Central Park Five languished in jail, that was no peace. When Anita Hill faced the scorn of angry white men, that was not peace. When Emmett Till was sunk deep into the waters of the Tallahatchie, when the Scottsboro boys fought for their lives, when the, when the gloom grew thick over Tulsa, that was not peace. 
when the founders of this country insisted in word and in deed that there was not going to be justice, they created the conditions alive today of no peace. And so today, even when the streets are quiet and the people are indoors, there is no peace. When there are no megaphones and marches and police lines, there is no peace. Calm and somnolence are not peace. The heavy sleep of white supremacy is not peace. Injustice is the baseline up in this peace, and therefore there is no peace, no justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. What they consider peace is a sleeping slick facade of peace for those in privilege and power to have comfortable, well-regulated lives. It is a sickly peace maintained by the tension and attack of armies and police, gates and walls, of red line neighborhoods and gerrymandered districts, of prisons and underfunded schools, of over-friendly cloying smiles by well-meaning, spiritually bypassed progressives, contradicted by lead-lined pipes that suck the cognitive abilities and life choices from the promising minds and bodies of black and brown babies. This is not justice, therefore, there is no peace. To create peace, it will not come from dominating protesters, protesters or vilifying football players who kneel on the fields of play. It will not come from demonizing the strangled and choking the oppressed. It will not come from, the filling, from filling the respirated, COVID-filled lungs of black and brown bodies who must risk work or risk death by economic strangulation. Peace will come. Peace will come from creating a palpable justice. Justice will come, but justice will not be given. It will be demanded and taken. No civil right to date has ever been given. Every civil right has only been demanded and then resistantly legislated once the will and the anger of the people managed to outweigh the dormancy of the status quo. Until then, there can be no peace because there is no justice. Even if the protesters go home tonight to their homes and put down their signs and paint and drink milk instead of wearing it, we will not be at peace. We will only be at calmness and complacency for the gentry. But now the veils are moving. Covidity is eroding civility. The band-aids are being pulled from angry skin and the founding wounds that have never healed are showing through again angry and red and moving with fight and fervor. For those of you with power to dispense police and armies, for, the, for those who proclaim the power to get the bastards off the field, for those that raise unread Bibles before unattended churches, just know your time is over. Your time is over. Your time is over. Because it, it really is quite simple, but deeper than it seems. No justice, no peace. And we are hungry for justice. And we are deserving of peace. The real peace. The breathing peace. The body peace the erotic peace, the seeing you and seeing me peace, the ending the structural racism peace. And like a woman giving birth raw and open and nothing else matters but the safe entry of her child into the world and fuck you if you stand in the way, we are no longer interested in your peace. We are not interested in your peace. We are making peace. We are making peace. 
Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You can't stop us from breathing. Thank you.